You know what? I think I'm done with Sony. It's not because these are bad cameras. I love these cameras. Ever since I started trying to make what I create actually look good, I've been shooting on Sony. I started with the a6300, now I have the a6400. Shot extensively with the a7S II, the a7III, a7R III. I mean, I have experience with these and they're great, but I think I'm done. I always feel there's this struggle when I'm shooting with a Sony camera. It's not that you can't get great results out of it because of course you can, they're really good cameras but I always feel like I'm fighting with the camera. I have to create my custom profile that's perfect or I have to adjust the colors and post a lot. Even when taking photographs, like they're not exactly great when they come out of the camera. I have to do a lot of tweaking. And all of this works. It's definitely possible. It creates great results, but I'm kind of tired of that. And when there's other options, well, I think I'm kind of done here. I've been in the Sony ecosystem for so long that honestly, I never really considered moving out of it. I mean, I have all the accessories, batteries, lenses, stuff like that. So, you know, moving ecosystems is always hard, but I finally bit the bullet. I did it. I bought the Canon EOS R and yeah, that might seem like a crazy move coming from really any Sony camera, but there's a few key reasons why I went with this and so far I'm loving it. Okay, so for a little while now, I've been using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It's what you're looking at right now, it's what I use here in the studio, it's what I use to create most of my videos. It's excellent, I absolutely love it. It's probably my favorite camera ever. But there is a lot that it doesn't do. It's a video camera, it's a very good one, but you kind of have to rig it out. Mine is kind of big. I don't really want to take it with me. It only does video, it doesn't do photography, so I'd always have to take a second camera with me if I was going somewhere. So I really just wanted a great companion that matched perfectly with the pocket cinema camera that I could take with me anywhere and that would perform just as well. So really I needed this camera to be great for like three things. It needed to be portable that I could take with me without much hassle. It needed to be great at photography and video and it needed pretty awesome autofocus. So real quick before we continue, I wanna thank this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is one of my favorite places to go online to learn new things. It's an online community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, video production, photography, business, pretty much anything you can think of. So if you're like me and you love learning new things or, you know, just honing your skills, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving through 2019. Now what's great is that Skillshare is actually affordable. So an annual subscription is less than $10 a month and these premium memberships give you access to any class that you want so you can join and start learning. But even better, anyone who uses my link down in the description will get a free two month trial. So really there is no reason not to try it. Join the more than 7 million creators already learning with Skillshare. And again, that link is down in the description. So there were a lot of cameras that I considered. I actually bought and used the GH5 for a while and it was great for video, but I didn't really like it for photography and the focus, it's not that great. The a7 III was one that many people recommended, but I've used it quite a bit. And it gives me all the same Sony issues that I already talked about. Didn't want to go that route. I was also very much considering the Fuji X-T3 and I almost went that route because it has some of my favorite features. I mean, first of all, the camera itself, I mean, it just looks cool, but it has 4K 60, which I use a lot for all of my B-roll and for photography, it's great. But honestly, I don't really like the way the video looks. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's perfectly usable. I just don't really like it personally. Plus it's a whole other ecosystem I have to get into that doesn't work really with anything else. There's a lot of adapting I have to do and it just didn't work. I didn't like that route. And you know, at first I didn't even consider the EOS R as an option. I just kind of always heard in my head, you know, it's, it's good for certain things, but not necessarily what I wanted it for. But as I kind of went through and checked all the things off the list that I actually needed in a camera, it was actually almost perfect. So of course, the EOS R is great at photography. Nobody really discounted that that was the case, and it's great. I absolutely love shooting with it. I don't have to adjust the RAW files quite as much as I did with other platforms. Shooting with it just feels very natural, and the pictures that I get are basically like what I see, and I actually love that. This is actually the first Canon camera I've ever owned. I've never had one before, and I kind of get why people love them so much. For photography, it's the best camera I've ever used. And it's great for video. You get really high quality 1080p footage and 4K footage. Yes, the 4K has a crop, but 
I don't really care. I'm already used to shooting in a cropped sensor mode, so it's really not that much different, and that doesn't bother me at all. Then you get seed log, which is great for coloring. You get 10-bit external if you have an external recorder, which I wish it had internal. That's probably one of the biggest things I don't like about this camera, but I found that the 8-bit internal recording is some of the most solid that I've ever tried. You can really push around the colors, and it works great. And of course, the biggest thing here is you get those Canon colors. So unlike my Sony, I don't have to fight with it either in camera or in post to get the colors that I was looking for. It just, it just works. It also has that excellent autofocus that I was looking for. That dual pixel autofocus is some of the best in the industry and it, it works. It works as advertised. The main reason I wanted great autofocus is so when I run the camera on a gimbal, I don't have to worry about it as much. When I'm using a gimbal, I'm running gun. I don't necessarily want to be looking at every single setting and having autofocus that you can trust just takes a big load off and the EOS R kills it. So right there, I've already covered everything that I needed. It's portable, great for photo and video, and has great autofocus. But the more I looked into it, it actually checks even more boxes that I didn't know I cared about. Now the big one is I can use EF lenses. Now yes, you have to get the adapter, but once you do, it's not impeding the performance like a normal adapter would. That's kind of the problem with adapters is you lose this performance, but because it's made by Canon, it works as a native lens. You just have another thing there. So I just put that on the camera and I never take it off, but I use EF lenses for my pocket cinema camera. I use a speed booster from Metabones and that's just what I've always had. Even when I was on Sony, I would shoot with EF lenses. So it just makes sense to continue using those lenses instead of trying to adapt or sell them and get other lenses. It just worked with what I already had. I also absolutely love the flip out screen. The fact that it goes all the way out and you can see yourself when it's pointing to yourself. I don't shoot a lot like that, but when I do, having that is invaluable. And then the last one that I didn't think about until last minute, but really just sealed the deal, is that it uses the same batteries that I already have. It uses those Canon batteries that every Canon camera uses, but the Pocket Cinema camera also uses those batteries. So I can just use the ones that I have, which I already have a ton of, and it works for both systems. I mean, the more I looked at it, this really was the perfect duo package for my creative endeavors. I mean, I get my full cinema camera here that I don't care how big it is or how bulky it is. It gives me the best quality, but then when I need to go, I can still not sacrifice in any of that stuff and, and in some ways actually get more out of it with the EOS R. So yeah, I am ditching my Sony cameras after years and years of tried and true usage. And it's not because Sony cameras are bad, but it's because I finally looked at what I actually needed and what would benefit my creative process. And I just found something better. <laughs>